train approaches a tunnel AB. Inside the tunnel is a dog located at a point that is 3 8 of the distance AB measured from entrance A. When the train whistles, the dog runs. If dog moves to the entrance of the tunnel A, the train catches the dog exactly at the entrance. If the dog moves to the exit B, the train catches the dog exactly at the exit. Right? The speed of the train is greater than the speed of the dog by what order? So basically we have to find out the speed ratio between trains and the dog, right? Speed of the train is to speed of the dog. So try and understand the question. I think it, it deserves a second reading. I mean, we have to read this once to clearly understand, right? A train is approaching a tunnel AB, right? It is coming towards a tunnel AB. And inside this tunnel, there is a dog which is located at a point that is at 3 8 of the distance AB. 3 8 of the distance AB measured from the entrance A. See, all these points are important, right? The dog is at 3 8 of the, 3 8 of the length of the tunnel, but from which side? From the entrance side, right? So which means 3 parts towards the entrance and 8 parts towards the, uh, I mean, uh, remaining 5 parts towards the exit. Then it says when the train whistles, the dog runs. Whenever the train whistles, the dog runs. Now there are two cases. The dog may run either towards the entrance or towards the exit. However, if you see whether the dog moves towards the entrance or towards the exit, the train catches, you know, at the entrance and the exit respectively, right? I mean, if the dog moves towards the entrance, the train catches the dog exactly at the entrance. If the dog moves towards the exit, the train catches the dog exactly at the exit. So based on this data, we got to find out the the speed ratio, right? Speed of the train is to speed of the dog. So let's let's understand, right? Now this is the tunnel, let's say. This is the tunnel AB. Right, the entrance A and the exit B. And here is a train. At this point is the train. Let us assume the distance between the train and the tunnel is D. Right? The point at which the train is, right? The train is approaching. The train is approaching here, right? So here at this point is the train. The distance between train and the entrance of the tunnel is D. This distance is D. Now the dog is at 3 8 of the distance AB. So basically the distance is AB. The dog is at 3 8 of AB. 3 8 of AB. What do you mean by that? And 3 8 of the B, A, 3 8 of the distance AB measured from the entrance A. From the entrance A. Which means if, if the total distance is, let's say, uh, you know, it's, it's like total distance is, divide the total distance AB into 8 parts. Total distance AB divided into 8 parts, the dog will be at 3 parts from the entrance out of the total 8 parts. You're getting it? So somewhere here. Somewhere here. This is the dog's position. Here's the dog. Here's the dog. What do you, what do you mean by 3 8 of distance? If this is 3 parts, then this is 5 parts. See, 3 8 of the total distance. If you look at the distance at which the dog is from the entrance, how much is it? 3 out of total, 3 plus 5, 8 parts. You're getting it? This, this, is, uh, this understanding is very important. The dog is at 3 8 of the distance. So total distance is 8 parts. The dog is at, you know, 3 parts from the entrance and 5 parts from the exit. 3 out of 8. You are able to follow? So basically we are saying that, let's let's say for example, the total distance of the tunnel is 8 kilometers. The dog is at 3 kilometers from the entrance and 5 kilometers from the exit. 3 by 8. Yes or no? Total, total is 8. 3 plus 5, 8. 8 parts. So dog is at 8 parts. Uh, let's, let's take it as 3x and 5x. I mean for the sake of, I mean we don't know right, what exactly it is. Is it 3, 5, 6, 10, 30, 50, 300, 500? So let's take it as 3x and 5x. 3 parts and 5 parts. Now. He has talked about two situations here. Situation one, when the dog moves towards the entrance. The train is at this point and the dog is at this point. The train whistles and the dog starts moving. The dog starts moving towards the entrance, let's say. So what happens? The dog and the train will meet exactly at this point. I'll, I'll, I'll use different colors so that we understand this very clearly. Case one, when the dog is moving towards the... Right? Case one, when dog moves towards entrance. This whole drama is not needed in the exam, but yeah, just for the sake of understanding. So what happens? The train starts moving towards the tunnel, of course. The dog also starts moving towards the entrance of the tunnel. And they meet exactly at this point, exactly at the entrance. Exactly at the entrance. Now try and understand. The time taken by the train to reach the entrance should be equal to the time taken by the dog to reach the entrance. Because the moment the train started whistling, the dog started moving. Right? So the time taken by the train to reach the entrance is equal to the time taken by the dog to reach the entrance. Time taken by train is equal to time taken by dog. And you know this, right? I mean, we have discussed this type of a situation many times. 
Like for example, you know, there are these questions in time and distance where it says that uh, a thief steals a car and starts running. By the time the owner discovers the theft, the thief is like, let's say four kilometers away or something, right? And he immediately starts following the thief and catches at some point. So we have always discussed that the time taken by the owner to reach the point of meeting is equal to the time taken by the thief to reach the meeting point. Time is always equal, right? Like, like for example, let's say when the train at, was at this point, it was 8 o'clock. I mean, for the simple explanation, the train was uh, at this point, the time was 8 p.m. The dog was wearing a watch, which was which which was showing the time as 8 p.m. Now, don't ask me, we, 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 you know, on which planet do dogs wear watch for the sake of understanding. Let's assume it is a man then. What happens? It doesn't make a difference, right? So, the time... Uh, was 8 p.m. when the train started moving. The dog was wearing a watch. When the dog started running, the watch showed 8 p.m. They will meet at this point. When the train reached the entrance of the tunnel, the time in train's watch was 8.10. And the time in dog's watch was 8.10. Yes or no? Of course, it will be 8.10 at the meeting point. What, both, both the times will be same, right? So, you think the train took 10 minutes to reach the meeting point. And so has the dog taken 10 minutes to reach the meeting point. So, basically, time taken is always equal. Time taken is equal. Time taken is equal, right? Which means what? See, if you see time taken by train is equal to time taken by the dog. What is time? Distance by speed. Time is equal to distance by speed. What is the distance covered by the train? It is D. By speed of the train? We don't know. Let's take ST. Time, right? This is the time taken by the train. Distance by speed. Equals to time taken by the dog. What is time taken by the dog? Distance by speed. What is the distance that the dog has covered? 3x. The dog has covered 3x. Speed of the dog? Let's say SD. So, this is one equation. Or I can say ST by SD. From this equation st by sd equals to d by 3x that's one case right what is the case 2 let me use some other color right case 2 what is case 2 case 2 is when the dog moved towards the exit towards the exit again the same argument holds true here as well right that the time taken by the train to reach the exit b is equal to the time taken by the dog to reach the exit b from this point onwards yes or no time taken by the train to reach the exit b Train covered how much for reaching exit B? It covered this D plus 3x plus 5x. So I can say the train has traveled D plus 8x. How much has the dog covered? The dog has covered 5x from this point to this point. Yes or no? Again, the time taken by the train to cover D plus 8x is equal to the time taken by the dog to cover 5x. Like in the earlier case, we said time taken by the train to cover D is equal to time taken by the dog to cover 3x. Here, time taken by the train to cover D plus 8x. Why is it 8x? Because the train will cover D. It will cover this 3x, then it will cover the 5x. So, time taken by train is equal to time taken by dog. What is time distance by speed? So, d plus 8x upon speed of train is equal to 5x upon speed of dog, which implies speed of train by speed of the dog is equal to d plus 8x upon 5x. Two equations. Of course, there are four variables, but we got to find another ratio. He's asking us to find out the speed of the train is to speed of the dog. So, from two ratios, we can find out the third ratio. I mean, basically, we have to find the same thing, ST by SD, ST by SD. But yeah, we need to know the relationship between D and X. So, for that, can we not directly equate uh, D and X now? Because ST by SD, this also is ST by SD. So, using these two, I can say D by 3X equals to D plus 8X by 5X. So, x anyway gets cancelled. Upon cross multiplication, what do we get? 5d minus 3d. 2d equals to 3 into 8, 24x. 2d is 24x implies d is equal to 12x. That's it. Substitute d equals to 12x here. So, 12x by 3x, 4 is to 1. So, we get st by sd equals to 12x by... You don't have to do all these steps in the exam. I'm just trying to, you know, do it in detail, right? 12x by 3x is 4 is to 1. So, your answer to this question should be 4 is to 1, which is option 4. Right? While the solution looks lengthy, it has taken some time. And there are like number of steps on the paper here, on the screen here. Does not mean that it actually takes so much time and you don't, you, you have to write all this in the exam. Right? I mean, if you have understood the question, you should, you should be just working on this equations. D by ST equals to 3X by SD and d plus 8x by st equals to 5x by xd and after that it's just about solving the two equations there so the ratio of their speed would be 4 is to 1 right right the ratio of the speed would be 4 is to 1